we have now pushed our initial dataset to our Algoli index. That's great. What's next? Data is usually not static. It evolves over time and sometimes very frequently. To provide a good search experience to your users, you want them to search through fresh data. Syncing your database with your Algoli index is then the next logical step to complete. In this video, we will cover the tools and strategies to do just that. Depending on your stack, platform, or use case, the need to establish a sync strategy will go from zero to elaborate. In most cases, a simple approach will be enough. On the zero side, you'll have our extensions with WordPress, Magento, Zendesk. Those extensions will take care of everything from building the indices to pushing the data and syncing it when necessary. That being said, you do also have the ability to take more control if you need to. In the middle range, you'll find the integration that we provide for Django, Rails, Symfony, and Laravel. Here, you'll have a wider degree of control while keeping things easy to configure. You can either manage the sync manually or automatically update indices based on events emitted by the framework. You'll find more information about each specific integration on their documentation. Finally, the most common option is the use of our API clients. Here, you will have complete freedom and ownership of the whole sync process that you will implement using one of our 10 API clients, JavaScript, PHP, Ruby, Python, Java, c -sharp, Go, Scala, iOS, or Android. Now that we know the tools at our disposal, let's explore the actual strategies to keep your data in sync with your Algoli indices. There is unfortunately no one-size-fits-all approach here. The strategy to adopt will depend on the use case. That being said, we can highlight a few core strategies. There are three main possible approaches to updating your data. In real time, every predefined period of time, or a mix of both. In real time, add, update, or remove records immediately after the change occurs in your database. This is the simplest approach, but it has a significant drawback. It generates more API calls and, depending on your plan, it can increase your cost. Generally speaking, it also increases the load on the servers. Periodically, keep track of changes between the last update and update only stale or missing data on Algolia accordingly. Depending on the periodicity of updates, this can be the most cost-effective solution. If you don't have time-sensitive data, then this is probably the way to go. Periodicity can be extremely variable depending on your needs, hours, days, weeks. You can actually mix both approaches to build something really tailored to your needs. Performing partial updates on critical values like stock availability on the fly, for instance, and updating the rest of the dataset at recurring intervals. We now have a few options as far as syncing strategy goes. Let's see next how to implement them with our API clients. You'll be able to keep your database in sync with Algolia by leveraging a few methods from the API client of your choice. Create with add object or add objects. We already covered this method in the push data video. It will send an object or an array of objects. If you don't provide object IDs, they will automatically be created for you. Update with save object or save objects. You will need the object ID of the record or records that you want to update. This will completely overwrite the original record with the given ID. So make sure to send all the attributes to avoid losing data on the indexed record. Partially update a record with the partial update objects method. With this method, you have the ability to modify only part of a record. You have the option to apply a variety of operations, including setting an attribute value, adding or removing an element from an array, or incrementing or decrementing a numerical attribute. Delete one or multiple records using the delete object or delete objects by sending the object IDs to identify what records to remove from the index. We've covered the basic methods to manipulate data either by individual record or multiple ones with arrays. 
But how does this scale when you need to update very large amounts of data? During the initial push, or if a large portion of your dataset needs to be updated at once, the best practice is not to perform one API call for every single record you need to update. For optimal indexing performance, we strongly encourage you to send your records in batches. We recommend a batch size of roughly 10 megabytes, which represent between 1,000 and 10,000 records, depending on the average record size. This has multiple benefits. It reduces network calls, and it increases indexing performance. Now that our data is in good shape and kept fresh in our ugly index, it is time to configure Red Evans. The next few videos will focus on the basic steps to provide a good texture relevance to your users.